Hi, my name is Penny Thompson Cruz, and I am professor of violin at Bowling Green State University College of Musical Arts in Bowling Green, Ohio. I have put together this video to help violinists prepare for the 2013 Northeast Ohio Regional Orchestra auditions. I invite you to friend me on Facebook, Penny Thompson Cruz, to like the BGSU Violin Studio, visit my webpage, or call or email me if you have any questions. Auditions will take place at Cleveland State University on September 28th. For more information, the email contact is listed above. Music can be found at the website listed above. Your audition begins when you walk into the room. Dress and behave with professionalism. Choose clothing, shoes, and jewelry that are comfortable, but not too casual, and they do not create a buzz. Get your violin and bow out before you enter the room. Tune your instrument to a tuner. Have your instrument and music in hand. Walk in with confidence and smile. Check your tuning quickly in case there is a change in the room temperature. This brief amount of playing will allow you to hear the acoustics of the room. Wait to start playing until the adjudicator has indicated. I suggest that you tape the two pages of the Tchaikovsky excerpt together so that you don't risk having the pages out of order or have to stop in the middle of the excerpt. You have been instructed to follow the bowings and fingerings provided for the Tchaikovsky and Elgar. I am not suggesting any changes but sometimes I will be giving you additional information. Always divide any chords or double stops in orchestral auditions, unless they are marked non debisi Start from the string after every rest. Take a moment between excerpts to determine your tempo, set each of your hands in the proper playing position, and determine the character of each excerpt. Think about each excerpt having a distinct sound. Keep going even if you make a mistake and maintain a steady tempo. Rhythm is the most important factor in orchestral playing. The Overture to Candide by Leonard Bernstein is a showpiece for orchestra the character comes from the fast tempo, virtuoso writing, the placement of accents, articulations, chromaticism, registration, and tone colors. Always translate all foreign terms in your music. The indicated tempo marking is allegro molto con brio, meaning very fast with vigor. The metronome marking equals half note, to 152. Try to stay as close to the metronome marking as possible, but do not play any excerpt faster than you can play it cleanly and accurately. Practice with the metronome every day, always starting at a slow tempo and gradually getting faster. I also suggest you use the metronome on subdivisions. Before you begin playing the excerpts in the audition, be sure to count out several measures in your head to get the tempo. Pick a place that best establishes the tempo for you. The first excerpt can be played starting in first or third position. with first position is that you will play an open A on the accented downbeat. Some orchestras would not allow this. Try it both ways. The string crossings are in different places with the two fingerings. Keep in mind that the opening dynamic is only forte, so don't force. 
use a small amount of both near the balance point. In tempo, you will be slightly off the string without trying to play off the string. The bow will naturally jump when you have a string crossing in a fast passage. Keep the left hand fingers close to the string. Keep your left hand relaxed and vibrate every note for a sparkling sound. And your left thumb needs to be relaxed as well. The accent on the downbeat is crucial. If you started in first position, shift to third on the A above the step in measure 26. In measure 27, make sure the F is long with vibrato, but unaccented. Then make a quick shift to fifth position for the CF figure. The tendency is to accent the F, which is longer, and not the indicated C. Conductors are always asking for more accent on these Cs. So really grab the string and intentionally play the F softer. The first accent comes on an up bow, so it should be exaggerated even more. Bernstein is creating rhythmic interest by obscuring the downbeat to the listener. The next accent occurs on the downbeat of measure 29. The descending line from the F consists of four eighth notes followed by a quarter note. The half step, full step pattern changes each time. First, it occurs between the E flat and the D, fingered 3 3. Then it moves the, to the D flat and the C, fingered 2 2. The third time, there is a half step between the, the D flat, the C, and the B. So the finger is 4 3 2 2 and a close 1. Each one of these should crescendo. Do an up, up bowing from the B to the D. Vibrate and make the high G long. Then I suggest shifting down to fourth position and crossing two string with the third finger. Then I go to the E string and do one, one, two, three. Make sure the quarter notes fortissimo are short but ringing. For the glissando or slide, I use third finger on the A string. I put the finger down as soon as the E flat has sounded to maximize the slide. In orchestra, I have both this passage two different ways. One way is to slur from the glissando into the next downbeat. The other way is to go up bow when you arrive at the pitch after the glissando and follow it by another up bow. This is my preference of bowing. Tritones figure prominently in this section. A tritone is the name for how an augmented fourth or diminished fifth sound. Tritones are difficult on the violin because our instrument is tuned in perfect fifths, and the tritone is one half step smaller. The tritone was called the devil's interval in early years. There are many measures that have two descending tritone intervals. The first one occurs in measure 34, the next one in 36, again you have them in 41 and 43. To make this fingering easier, I suggest the following. Starting at the E flat gliss, Two, three, one, three, one, perfect fourth, open A, and you're going to want to immediately move your bow over to the E string so you're glissing on the E string. Three, two, fourth, 
One, four, two, two. You may notice that I am fingering using enharmonics. Enharmonics are the same sound but different spelling of a pitch. A flat equals G sharp. So that's why I do two four on the A flat to C flat. And then F natural. Then I shift into third position for two two. The accented eighth notes should be played starting down bow on the G string. Shift on the half step. Four three two two one. The second time that appears, it's a whole step higher with the same fingering pattern. Four three two two one. I want you to pay special attention to the fact that the glissando notes have an accent, which is in the middle of the measure, so that's an unexpected place for emphasis. At the end of the arco passage, when I do 4 3 2 2 1 on the G string, I end up in second position. I want to play that at the frog, so I'm very close for pizzicato. I choose to do the next note in the same position, second position. So there's less motion, and then I shift afterwards. So all I have to do is get to the pizzicato. In order to, to pizzicato, I keep my bow hand frame, but I extend my index finger long and grab the string. Try to vibrate the low B flat. <laughs> my next fingering is after the third finger, I go up to first finger B. This is chromatic one, two. So B flat, B, C, all half steps. Then a whole step to D and a half step. So I do three, one, two, three, four. Now I make use of enharmonics again and think F sharp and go down on the E string, the first finger. Still thinking enharmonically, I think B natural instead of C flat. Here's a tritone, low first finger. The other tritone, I play. G sharp instead of A flat, two, three, then a perfect fifth, two, two. Now I'm shifting into fifth position or an extended fourth position because I have a tritone again. Four, one, three, one, four, perfect fourth, down to first position, one. G string, fourth position, four, three, two, two, one. <laughs> Try to vibrate narrowly on the final C and play it slightly shorter than the low C. Tips about pizzicato. The fact is we don't practice it nearly enough or at all. The first thing you should do is practice all pizzicato passages arco with the bow so that you can hear clear intonation. Look out over the fingerboard for more resonance using the fleshy side of your finger. To pluck louder, press harder with the left hand fingers on the fingerboard. But don't forget to vibrate. Practice going from arco to pits and reverse in tempo. You can do arco and just the first note of pits. You can do the last note of pits and the first note of arco. It is very easy to miss the string entirely and even scratch your instrument when you're playing in a fast tempo and playing loudly. So you want to work on the accuracy of that contact. I offer the following suggestions for strategies of practicing the opening. Practice groups of notes on the same string or in the same position, then stop. This allows you time to think and regroup. You might also practice dotted rhythms. Reverse bowings or slur. Now I will play the first Bernstein exit. Bernstein 
mind excerpt is more lyrical and less technical. It is important to have a beautiful sound. Use a lot of bow, but do not accent your bow changes. Slow practice will help you have a consistent vibrato and good bow distribution. Count carefully. The composer uses a pattern of two measures in cut time followed by one measure in 3-2 time. The half note gets the beat, so you alternate between measures with two beats and a measure with three beats. There are four six measure phrases preceded by a pickup, or two 12 measure phrases preceded by a pickup. Think the viola part before you start, so that when you come in, you have the feeling that you are joining the music before. Make sure your up bow gets you to the lower half for the cantabile singing melody. <laughs> Think about the bow moving in an arc against the curve of the bridge as you crescendo towards the frog. With an open D string, you'll be playing two notes on each string under the slur. Vibrate every eighth note. The first time the melodic material appears, it's marked mezzo forte. Avoid the tendency to play too loudly. This melody can be fingered in first position. Some conductors or adjudicators may dislike the open A that occurs in 97 and 100. An alternate fingering would be this. Shift to two. Shift back to one. Two. Half step shift to two. Make sure you count measure 100 accurately. To avoid the brightness of the E string, I start the next part in fourth position, second finger at the A string. Then I shift to two, second position, extend back to one, and then back to third position. Note the diminuendo that occurs starting on that E flat. The next eight eighth notes are under crescendo and will take you to forte espressivo, so louder dynamic than you started at. If you play these eighth notes in first position, you will probably play an open E. To avoid that, stay in third position and have a 2-2 two -two shift from the E flat to E natural. The fingering I use starting in 107, the forte es percibo, is two. Shift to three. Shift to two. Diminuendo one, and put it in the up bow that's missing. The next downbeat is Forte subito, meaning suddenly forte, it's a re energized forte set. Three, two, diminuendo. You will note there is a diminuendo here that goes to the end of the passage. I will now play the second excerpt. Elgar Serenade for Strings. The first movement is marked Allegro Piacevole, meaning fast but pleasantly, agreeably. 
Six eight indicates that there are two beats for measure. Six eight meter is in compound meter, meaning that there are three parts to every beat. The composer indicates dotted quarter equals 96. In the Elgar excerpt, the pitches are not terribly difficult. So fingering choices will give you an opportunity for more personal expression. You may choose to place a passage with a certain fingering in order to keep the same tone color by staying on one string. Or you may want to, to cross over to a higher string in order to get a brighter sound. The first excerpt has two passages with the same melodic material. And this is a great opportunity to vary your fingerings. The excerpt begins with the violin solo in measure 70. Sing the 2D violin part in your head to establish this tempo and character before you begin. The printed dynamic is piano espressivo with a crescendo on a down bow. I would not play this solo too softly as you are answering the, the section which is divided in divisi and at a higher register. In order to crescendo on this down bow, make sure you add bow weight and speed and speed up your vibrato as well. I suggest counting through all rests in this excerpt. The first two solo passages are based on the same melodic material, so you might consider fingering them differently. The first passage could be played on the D string from the first finger to the third finger with a portamento slide. An easier and brighter fingering would be to play it in second position so that the E comes on the third finger instead of the weaker pinky. With either fingering you choose, try to keep growing through the long E as well as the C sharp and D. I would finger the last three pitches B, A, G sharp as 3, 2, 1 on the D string. Make sure to hold the daughter quarter full value. The time you have it before E, there is no diminuendo. To create contrast for the second solo, I start in third position and play the, the F sharp with my third finger on the A string for a brighter sound. I do a half step shift on the first finger between the D sharp and the E. Half steps are great places to shift, either to hide a shift or to add a tiny slide. Your next entrance, you join the violin section and play the top line. Start the F sharp on a third finger. Practice the shift from fourth position to sixth position. You have to do a quick retake and then start with at least a mezzo forte. Save your bow, add weight so you can get a good crescendo on the down bow, and keep growing until the fortissimo. natural tendency will be to diminuendo on all the down bows. You want to work your way to the lower half and measure 85. I shift to a third finger on the D natural. In measure 86, I suggest the following fingerings for the two note on the string figure. One, two, cross over to the A string, one, two, I think of that inharmonically as a D and a D sharp or an E flat. The same note is repeated, two, three, quick grace note, one, four, oh. Then I go to first finger, 
Second finger. Third finger. I choose the third finger on the sforzato with the carrot or hat in order to have a wider vibrato on this special note. Then I do a portamento slide down to half position for one, two. In one measure, I have the sforzato and the carrot at a fortissimo dynamic and the minuendo to piano for the next downbeat. Keep counting the upcoming rests. At letter F, you have another fingering choice. This could be performed all in first position. If you prefer a darker sound and would like to stay on the D string longer, shift up to fourth position on the A. Then you may either come down on the F sharp at the end of that bar or stay in fourth position. And the next bar, the third measure of F, is marked pianissimo with an accent on the G. Do the accent with your vibrato. I use a fast vibrato and a fast bow speed with light weight for this passage. There's one bow to do the crescendo and two bows to do the diminuendo. Don't crescendo above a mezzo piano. Now I will perform the Elgar excerpt. Tchaikovsky, Romeo, and Juliet. High violin passages have a tendency to sound screechy if you are not careful. Aim for a ringing sound, even though this passage is depicting a duel. Do not force the sound from your instrument. The seventh measure and two measures before T should be played as measured 16th notes slightly above the middle of the bow. Vibrate them narrowly and do not accent every beat. Think about creating a sustained fortissimo sound for the entire measure. I find it helpful to raise my scroll a little bit. Shifting creates challenges in this excerpt. I slate all the shifts in practice and fill in non-adjacent intervals. For instance, setting the hand at the beginning, D, E, F sharp, shifting back to B, before you start this excerpt, Think of the speed that you can play the passage that starts in the fourth measure after S. Da -da 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 At letter S, I start on the third finger and I give a slight accent to the first G. Quickly set your bow at the rest in fourth position. Phrase to the downbeat in this measure and the following two measures. Lower half. The dotted eighth sixteenth rhythm should be hooked and you should come away and release the sound. Be 
Be sure and vibrate the high G. When you play in the high register, you need to vibrate more narrowly than you would in lower registers. In the next 16th note chromatic passage, you have a choice of fingerings. Before it gets too high, you could cross strings while staying in lower positions, or you can shift with each new motive. I'm going to give you fingerings where you shift for each new motive. So after the 16th rest, I play O, one, three, four. I'm thinking inharmonically from E flat to a G flat to F. Then I'm shifting to one, three, four. One, one, two, three, same position, and fourth finger on the next downbeat. Then I'm shifting to the A string. One, two, three. Four. Then I'm shifting to the E string. For the next slurred passage, I'm going to do one, two, one, three, four. So I'm thinking about the fact that I have an A flat and a B natural. This fingering also helps me avoid cheating the last note of the slur. Now I have a hard shift to fifth position for the next C, one, two, three, one, and then one, two, three, four. Shift to one on the high F, one, two, three, then do one, two, two, four, four. Coming out of the whole note measured sixteenths, you're on the string and finger four, two, three, one. You can either cross over to the A string or shift down to the E string, one, two. Then if you have shifted, go back to what would have been a one and play three on the F sharp. So you're thinking E flat, G flat. Then half step shift to the G. Do the same phrasing and articulation as you did in the previous time. Now we have a difficult shift, but not if you think of the D sharp as an E flat. So, and then a perfect four. The next passage, I finger similarly. It's E, F sharp, F double sharp like a G, and a G sharp. So we'll do one, two, three, four, with the whole step between one and two. Then I shift to first finger, one, three, four, one, one, two, three, four. Then I shift to the A string, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, four. I shift to the E string, one, two, three. Then on the third 16th, I do one, two, one, three, four. Then I shift to one, one, two, three, four. One on the F sharp. The four slurred 16th, one, two, two, four, and a four on the top note. Coming down, I go four, two, three, one, four, three, A string, four, two, then two, one, with an accent on the first D sharp at letter T. I'd like to point out that the rhythmic pattern created by the bow sometimes falls as down, up, down, up, and sometimes calls up, down, up, down. You will need to be in the lower half with a quick sudden motion from your forearm on the short note and slow in the string for the slurred pitches. For improved tone and intonation in this excerpt, practice it softly. Practice it legato with slurs and without the repeated notes. Here's an example.
Then I would practice the slurred sixteenths all separate. <laughs> I would also practice playing groups of notes within one position or on one string as fast as possible, then putting a stop, shifting quickly, wait, then play the next pattern. Repeat any pattern that is not clean. I will now play the Tchaikovsky excerpt. consider before your audition. Avoid caffeine. Practice the excerpts in any possible order. Record your excerpts regularly and listen back for ways to improve. Clean your strings. Here's a website that has a detailed description of how to do that. How old are your strings? Do you think you should change them? Make sure you change them in time for them to stretch before the audition. Do you need to get your bow rehaired? Are you standing so that your F holes face the judges? Be sure not to hide behind the stand so they cannot see you. Do not tap your foot while playing. Do not chew gum. Avoid unnecessary extraneous body motions that do not contribute to the music. Take a deep breath before you start each part of the audition. And remember, the judges want you to do your best. I hope that you have found this video helpful. Look for a future video to help you prepare for the Ohio All-State Violin Sitting Auditions. Thanks for watching.